My name is uh, Joram van Klaveren. I'm from the Netherlands, uh, and I used to be a member of uh, the PVV. Uh, it's a, probably a party that uh, you do not know, and if you do know, that's uh, yeah, that's something special to, <laughs> to, to know. Uh, it's it's the party of Geert Wilders. Maybe you've ever heard of him, the guy with uh, the blonde uh, hair. <laughs> it's not a real uh, hair color. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> But uh, he, uh, yeah, he he, uh, he founded the party in uh, 2006, and uh, it's called the PVV, the Freedom Party of the Netherlands. And uh, the main goal of that party uh, was to uh, make sure that Islam was not able to grow in the Netherlands. And later on, it was the uh, the purpose was to ban Islam from the Netherlands in, in total. Um, well, I, I'll come back to that later. Maybe it's uh, interesting that I introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Joram van Klaveren, as I said, uh, and I grew up in a very uh, orthodox Protestant environment. My uh, f mother and father uh, were reformed, were members of the Reformed Church. Uh, I have an older brother, a sister, another younger brother. Uh, we went to church, uh, we read the Bible, uh, we uh, yeah, we did all the things that normal <laughs> Christian uh, people do. Uh, so, uh, but we were a very uh, we, we were members of a very strict uh, uh, denomination of the Christian Church. So, uh, other religions, uh, yeah, were uh, gone astray in the opinion of uh, the theologians of uh, my church. Uh, so that's something that you. Uh, it was not explicitly said but it's something that you uh, that you that you learn uh, during the yeah the, the days that you get raised till uh, let's say 16 17 um, so so my I had a certain uh, religious bias towards Islam not not specific Islam but other religions in general but Islam was certainly not a, a not an option to to look at in, in a positive way whatsoever um, I, I studied religion, uh, comparative religion. When I uh, got older, I went to university. But the, you take, of course, the things you learn uh, in, in your upbringing with you. So that's something uh, I did too. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I became politically active after 9/11 uh, because uh, September 11, uh, 2001, was the first day of my study of comparative religion. So it was a, a strange kickoff. Uh, after that, we had a, a murder in uh, the Netherlands. Maybe you've heard of it, Theo van Gogh. Uh, he was murdered uh, by a, a jihadist, uh, a, a lady who is active in uh, in the United States as well, who's from the Netherlands, Ayan Hirsche Ali. Uh, yeah, we she was in in Parliament when I was an assistant of uh, a politician back then. So it, the 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 whole. Uh, sphere in in a political sense and uh, in, in in a social sense was very anti-Islam. Uh, of course, you had uh, the terrorist attacks in London, Madrid, etc., etc. So there was a certain uh, yeah, it was a certain time that that, that the, the view that people had uh, when it came to Islam became negative and more negative, more negative. And uh, I think that another thing that's very important uh, that played a role in the, the way I developed myself uh, is the fact that in Europe there is a historical bias towards Islam because of uh, the historical clashes. And uh, we have uh, crusades uh, from the Christian church towards uh, the Islamic world. There are uh, attacks from uh, Ottoman Empire, for example, on the, the Christian part of the world. So. There have uh, been clashes for uh, yeah, uh, hundreds of years, uh, one side, the other side, and uh, the other way around. Uh, and the combination of those things, the start of, uh, of, of my uh, comparative religion study at uh, September 11, 2001, uh, the fact that Theo van Gogh uh, was murdered, uh, my upbringing, and I think uh, the historical bias of, of Europe uh, when it comes to Islam, the combination of those things made me uh, want to become politically active. And I was searching for a party who was most anti-Islam. Well, I found that, <laughs> that party. It was, uh, it was uh, Geert Wilders from the PVV. And I, I, I did everything I could 
when I became a member of parliament. It was in uh, 2009, 2010. And so that's uh, way back and uh, yeah, the last, uh, I think, seven, eight years of the, the seven, eight years after that, I did everything that I could to stop Islam from uh, growing. I, I uh, uh, tried to get legislation to ban uh, Islamic schools in the Netherlands, to ban all mosques, uh, to prohibit uh, reading the Quran. So, and in uh, one time we, we, we made legislation or we try to make legislation to uh, ban Islam in general from from the Netherlands, of course, and uh, Alhamdulillah, it didn't work. But uh, that was something that we uh, that we tried, uh, and I left I left um, Islam. Sorry, I left uh, I left uh, the political party, the PVV, in uh, 2014, 2015. Um, and that was because uh, it, it was an anti-Islam party, uh, but in 2014-2015 Geert Wilders uh, was active at a rally, a right-wing rally, and he asked the people, do you want more or less Moroccans? And uh, the whole crowd uh, shouted less, 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 and, and uh, then he said, okay, I'll make that happen. And that was, uh, for me, it was, it was a point that I thought, okay, I'm still anti-Islam, but this has nothing to do with is anti-Islam anymore. This anti-Moroccans. So I uh, I asked him to take his words back or change it or do whatever to yeah, play it down a little bit. He said, "No, why should I?" Uh, so then I left, uh, and in 2017 I stopped politics uh, in general. I uh, I did some I do something else now. I work for the radio and teach and. Uh, other things, no politics anymore. But um, uh, I, there was one uh, long-held desire that I had was writing a, an anti-Islam book because I was still anti-Islam, only not active in the politics anymore. Uh, and I was, uh, I, I thought it should, it would be very, um, it would be a very uh, important thing that all the things that I said and that anti-Islamic. Uh, people and groups say that we have a, a theoretical basis with with, uh, with great grounds, so we can point uh, point to the book when people have uh, discussions, and we would solve the dispute about Islam. Is uh, is Islam a religion of peace, or is it something very wrong and evil when it comes to Europe or the West or the world in general? Uh, so I uh, started writing the book. But I always had, as a, as a Christian uh, guy, my doubts on certain dogmas of the Christian Church, for example, the Trinity, uh, the crucifixion of Christ, and um, I, I, I thought there were uh, those were points uh, when it comes to the Christian dogmas that are, are difficult to understand. So, um, but I was writing the book. But those, uh, I, I tell you this because it comes back later in my story. Um, I, uh, I I tried to uh, to write the book, and what I did was um, all the objections that I had, and those were, for example, uh, Islam promotes terror. That's something that I thought. Uh, Islam is anti-women. Islam is anti-Jewish. Uh, uh, Islam is anti-democracy. Well, all the the prejudices and all the the stereotypes when it comes to Islam, I had. Uh, and what I did was uh, starting to read and reread the, the articles and the books that I already read. But at some point, I came across information that was at odds with the things that I was used to read and what I learned in the past. So I started writing uh, letters to several ministers, to imams, and to scholars. And one of those scholars was uh, Abdul Hakim Murad. Uh, he's uh, a professor from University of uh, Cambridge, uh, but I didn't know that. I just followed a line and thought, oh, well, he's a scholar, so I write. And uh, I, I, I didn't know if people would write back because I put a little link from Wikipedia and my, my own page is in English as well. So I thought, okay, uh, I give them at least the information so they know who they are talking or writing with. And after... I uh, find out who he was. I thought, oh, well, he will never answer. But he is one of the yeah, greatest scholars in Europe when it comes to Islam. And uh, But he did. And I got uh, a 17-page mail back 
<laughs> with another whoa. <laughs> so I started reading and reading and reading, and he asked me at the end, "What? How? Uh, how is it possible? Because you studied comparative religion at Free University, where uh, Abdul Hakim Murad also taught in the, in the past." So he asked me, "From well, what happened?" And what titles did you read? And uh, what, what's the information you got? So I gave him a list with titles. He said, okay, I, I know where you're coming from. I understand. Um, and I explained that uh, when I was younger and I was at university, the, the, the points that I uh, mentioned earlier when it comes to uh, uh, the historical bias and uh, the upbringing, etc. But at one point in 2003, 2004, I went as a, as a student to several mosques. And I asked several Muslims, well, what's up with uh, Afghanistan, Taliban, etc., etc. And there was one guy who told me, well, that's, that's what Islam wants. And he was a Muslim. And he said to me, yeah, well, I don't like it either, but that's what God wants. So we have to do that point. And then I thought, whoa, you're, you're even more crazier than I thought. And that, that hardened my views when it, uh, when it came to Islam. And I told Abdul Hakim Murad as well, and he said, well, you know what the point is, that you have Dar al-Islam, he said, it's a house of Islam, and you are in a little barn somewhere in the garden with all the extremists, the anti-Islam guys and the extreme Muslims. And so what you have to do is get out of the barn, walk into the garden, look at the house, go into the house, and then we talk again. You can ask questions again. And that's what, and I ask him, well, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm uh, willing to get out of the barn <laughs> if you give me some information, how, uh, a map. So he gave me some information, I started reading and reading, and in the end, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I thought, okay, Islam, the, the teachings of Islam, I thought, okay, that it, it looks very much like, like Christianity, yeah? uh, be, be polite, uh, of course, uh, believing in God, uh, believing in the prophets, etc. But... In the end, uh, I, uh, the, 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 the big difference, of course, is, is where, whether the question whether is Muhammad is a prophet or not. So I, I thought, okay, uh, maybe Islam, the teachings of Islam are okay, but Muhammad is still, as I learned, an antichrist, or he is uh, a crook, or uh, all the, the, the bad things you can uh, imagine. Uh, that, that was still the view that I held when it came to, uh, to my prophet Muhammad. What, uh, what I did... Uh, was comparing him not to Jesus, because a lot of people always say you have to compare him with Jesus, but I, f I found that illogical, because Jesus had another mission. If, even when I was still not a Muslim, I thought, well, it's, it's, it's more fair to compare him f to Moses, because I thought, well, in, in, in the Christian church I was brought up, they, they uh, called Moses the lawgiver. And I thought, well, he... Ma Prophet Muhammad brought a law as well, the Sharia. So I thought, well, we have two guys who say they bring a law, so it's more it's more fair that I compare those two with each other. And I thought, well, uh, one of my objections was um, Muhammad used violence. And then, yeah, I read, of course, Moses used violence as well, and especially the the guy who followed Moses when Moses died, Joshua is a prophet as well in the in the Old Testament. Uh, he was he used a lot of violence, and when I compared the teachings when it came to um, uh, war uh, between the Bible and the Quran, I found out that that uh, what the Quran, for example, says you cannot kill women, children, now all the things you you probably know. Uh, but in the Bible, there are passages that say the opposite. They say you have to kill women, kill it, kill them all. And uh, of course, uh, uh, and uh, let, let's be happy that, that that's not what uh, the, the, the most Christian churches teach. But there are passages in the Old Testament that, that say that you have to wipe out everything, even the grass. So everything has to uh, yeah, be erased. Um, so I thought, okay, uh, when it comes to violence, I can uh, no longer say that Muhammad, because he fought uh, uh, a war, and it was a defensive war, uh, that uh, that he is no prophet if I accept uh, Moses and Joshua, for example. So, okay. And then I went to another point and another point. And all the points that I, uh, my objections against Muhammad, when I compared it to other prophets, I, I had no grounds anymore. So, in the end, I thought, well, maybe they are all no prophets, <laughs> or uh, Muhammad is a prophet as well. And uh, that was the, uh, a point for me that I 
yeah, I had to look into my heart to see, who, I still believe in God. Well, if you believe in God, why do you believe God? There is a revelation. If I believe in a revelation, that the revelation is brought by someone or someone's, that's not an English word, but by people. And those people we call prophets. So I thought, okay, then, then Muhammad is a prophet. And then I realized, well, if I say Muhammad is a prophet and I believe in God, then there is a problem. Because then, then I would be a Muslim, and that's not still something I didn't didn't want to be. And uh, this, so I I I, uh, I talk to a lot of people, and um, uh, they say, yeah, well, <laughs> if that's the case, you are a Muslim, <laughs> whether you like it or not, or you must stop in, stop believing in God or something. But I couldn't, and uh, then I thought, okay. I, I just park it and I don't do anything with it and uh, I'll leave it for, for what it is. But yeah, if you are a believing person, uh, whether you're not a Christian or a, a Buddhist or a, or a Muslim, you want to do something with the things you believe in, especially when it's, yeah, it's the core or the cornerstone of your life. And it was still so. I, I believed in God and I thought, yeah, I want to abide the laws of God. I want to do something uh, that, that is good. Uh, so I had to do something with with my newfound uh, information, and I uh, started looking for a for a publisher to uh, do something with the book. And uh, the book was not all already finished, but most of the parts that I found out and the the, the new information I uh, I found out were in the book, but not yet my conversion, but because I didn't convert it yet. And I was looking for a, a Dutch typical Dutch uh, publisher. So I, I, I uh, yeah, it, it's called, in, in Dutch it's called the Kennis House. It means House of Wisdom. But they wrote it in old style Dutch. And, and uh, when you write it in old Dutch, it's typical Dutch. Most nationalist guys write it in old Dutch. So you see, oh, whoa, he's a real Dutch. <laughs> so uh, that's what it, and I thought, oh, okay. And, and uh, the publisher wrote, at Kenneth's house, so the House of Wisdom in Old Dutch. And they were uh, specialized uh, in Islamic literature. So I thought it was an anti-Islamic uh, uh, publisher. And I, I wrote them, well, I've scripted and I got, and got it back. And I said, maybe we can meet. And yeah, all of a sudden there was a guy against me and he was uh, sitting in front of me and he was a Muslim. I said, oh, why, uh, you look Muslim. <laughs> yeah, I am a Muslim, it's, Islamic, uh, it's an Islamic publisher. Islamic publisher, you, you called it Kenneth's house, and you wrote it in old Dutch. Yeah, I know, we did it on purpose because yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's it, we're, we're uh, in that way we try to reach out for people who, who think that uh, Islam is not compatible with uh, with the West or with uh, Holland uh, in this case. Uh, so we start talking. I, ta I told him where I was that I I believe that Muhammad probably was a prophet and. I still believe in God. He said, well, you, you are a Muslim, but you don't know it yet. So I start <laughs> reading, and it, it took uh, a couple of months, and after, after those months, uh, we were eating uh, with, at home um, by the publisher, and he, uh, he, there was an imam with us and some other guys, also non-Muslims, and, uh, and the imam suddenly asked me, do you believe in God, yes or no? I said, yes, do you believe Muhammad was a prophet, yes or no? I said, yes. I said, well, we take the shahada now, um, or, or is it something you do not want to do? And then I said, yeah, I think deep in my heart I want to do it, but I cannot do it because, um, uh, A, of course, because of your family, uh, and yeah, because I, I was a right-wing nationalist, I cannot become a Muslim, that's ridiculous. Uh, but I did, and uh, yeah, it uh, yeah it, it made me very happy, and I'm still very happy today. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people um, yeah, in my family, of course, are a little less happy uh, when uh, when I did it. And some Muslims ask me, "Well, aren't you uh, aren't you mad at your family, or uh, why aren't you disappointed?" But I'm not because, uh, especially with my mother, she was very sad and. Uh, uh, yeah, she said it's not because I'm sad uh, because you became Muslim. She said I was all, I would also be sad when you became uh, a Buddhist because yeah, she thinks Christianity is the truth. So she was worried for my soul. 
so I couldn't be I, I, in the first place. It's it's hard to be mad uh, at your mother, but uh, especially when somebody is mad or sad out of love. So that's that's something that I always try to remember. But there, there are a lot of uh, yeah, of course, the old supporters of uh, the political party. I was uh, I was uh, active in. Uh, yeah, who are not so uh, happy that this, uh, the, the, the usual death threats and stuff like that. But uh, that, that's that's not something that that holds you back because uh, I, I yeah, it, it made me very happy. And the 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 doubts I had is that what I told about Christianity, the doubts I had when it comes to the Trinity of uh, God and uh, the crucifixion, the, the fact in Christianity, people believe that uh, God had to sacrifice. Jesus Christ, so he could forgive the world. But at the same time, in the Bible, uh, it says that God is almighty and does what he want to do. And I always thought as a child, well, if you are almighty as uh, God, why can't you just forgive? Why is there a son who had to die before you can say, okay, I forgive? So I, I thought it was illogical. Uh, I still and I still think Christianity is a nice uh, religion. Only I, I I didn't believe the the the, the truth with a capital capital T. It, it wasn't there for me anymore. And uh, strangely enough, when I was writing the book, I got Islamic answers to Christian questions. And uh, yeah, that 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 was a point for me that I thought yeah, it, it gave me a lot of rest and uh, the my heart and my head resonated. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I uh, didn't have before. So uh, when I felt that, and I, of course you believe it, yeah, that, that made me in the end um, uh, deciding to, uh, to become a Muslim. And that's what I did. And uh, I still am. And, uh, I'm very happy. This in short story. So, uh, <laughs> um, I think, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know what the, what the program uh, is. Do you want to ask question people in the... Let's give him a round of applause for that. That was really touching. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So we're going to do a Q&A now, and we'll start with the sisters, and we'll ping pong back and forth with the brothers. Uh, so first, for the sisters, inshallah, there's a mic going around, and brother, my voice will come to you. Just raise your hand if you have a question, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. And it uh, looks like we'll go to Sister Shazia first. This one. Salam alaikum. Um, so I guess what I wanted to ask you was I, I personally am a revert to Islam as well. Um, and I come from a household. My parents don't know I'm Muslim. Um, my parents are both very Islamophobic. I think my dad is sort of probably similar to the man you once were. Um, still love him, you know, just, it's not something I can talk about right now, it's my religion. Um, so I guess my question to you would be, what were, um, what advice would you give to someone, to your old self maybe? Um, and yeah, I, I guess I'd be interested to hear that. Well, thank you uh, for the question. I don't, is it, you can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. What what kind of advice uh, do you give to yourself or your father or mother, maybe? Um, yeah, I I think that one of the most important things uh, when it comes to Islam is is education and making uh, people see that Islam is not what you see at the news or the the things you always hear. And I think in America. Uh, I, don't, I don't know America, of course, because I don't live here. But I think uh, in America there there is a certain bias that we all also have in Europe, because a lot of Europeans in the past uh, went uh, from Europe to to America, of course. So uh, the historical uh, aversion some people have against Islam because of the clashes there have been um, are also maybe in, in, in the American culture. 
and especially after 9/11, of course, it, uh, and, uh, bombings and terrorism, etc. Uh, but at, at the other hand, it's it's not like uh, we 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 think uh, of Christianity when we look at the KKK, for example. It's it's a Christian organization, but it's not that most of the people uh, don't see the KKK as a Christian organization. But they claim they were or still are. I don't know if they still exist. But in uh, when it comes to Islam, people do. They say, okay, we see, for example, ISIS, and that's Islam. And all other Muslims are not real Muslims, or they're pretending uh, pretending to be uh, very uh, democratic or law-abiding, etc. Um, sorry. But uh, it, it is uh, it is a fact that, that Islam is something else. And uh, my story, I wrote a book about it. Uh, and I think in, in the Netherlands, I think it's very important that people read my journey because most of the arguments people use against Islam are pointed out in the book. And uh, there's an explanation why it doesn't, uh, why it isn't correct. And the book is being translated into English. So maybe if it is, uh, is it, if they publish it, and I think in a month or three, you can give it to your father. I'll send it to you, <laughs> and I'll, I'll write something for him in the book, uh, and maybe maybe that uh, opens the door. And uh, uh, it, it would be nice, of course, if he became Muslim. But if he doesn't, uh, at least he, he, he understands better what Islam is and what what probably uh, move motivates you to uh, become uh, Muslim. Does this work? Uh, uh, thank you for your presentation. It was very insightful. Uh, the question that I have, uh, first of all, I've been to Holland, great country and very nice people. Uh, the question that I have is, have you thought about going back to politics and maybe spreading what you've learned and essentially sharing with people and changing their view of the typical stereotype image of a Muslim? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, I, no, I, uh, I didn't uh, think of uh, politics and I still don't think of politics too much. I, of course, you follow politics, uh, but uh, I, I have no desire to uh, to go back. I've been in politics for 12 years, in uh, yeah, we, you call it here the Senate, and it, it, yeah, if you are in politics, you have to have uh, a certain ideological motivations, and I think a little bit uh, of. Uh, or arrogance, or naive, uh, being a little bit naive. So if you, you have to believe that you can change the world, uh, and and I hope, of course, that we can change the world as 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 a community. But I have no longer the the, the illusion <laughs> that, that that the political party can change uh, the the system. Um, but and I and I think in the end, it's it's not a political thing. It's it's something of the people. And um, I, if, if people see that Islam is a positive force and that you, that you contribute to a country, that you contribute to your own community, but also to other communities, that, that the, the few of people will change. If, if I can change, and yeah, you don't know me, of course, but I was, I was really anti-Islam. So I, if, if somebody then told me, well, in, in about five years you will be a Muslim and you're sitting in the United States of America talking about your conversion to Islam, I thought he was uh, crazy. But it did happen. So <laughs> I, I think in the end it's, it's something that, uh, yeah, that, that has to come out of the people itself, non-Muslims I'm talking about. And I think that a lot of Muslims, especially in Europe, because I think it's a little bit different here, uh, also have to look at themselves and see why is it that people are always so negative because in, in the Netherlands there are a lot of uh, Muslim uh, youngsters, uh, youth, who are making a lot of troubles and uh, when they are making trouble sometimes they shout Allahu Akbar. So non-Muslims associate Islam as a religion because they, they hear something with Allah and they see youngsters, uh, uh, for example, uh, throwing in a window with a stone or whatever, 
And so the, the association is always violence Islam. And of course they see the news, they see terrorism, and they hear people like my old me telling on television, well, this is wrong, they are don't, blah, blah, blah. So the, the combination makes it very hard for non-Muslims to see Islam in a positive way. And I think that the best group to, to show them the other side are Muslims, because we are, of course, uh, the ones who have to practice the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. And I think if we really practice those teachings, that we have a better world. So, And it starts with yourself as a community. So uh, I th I, I'm not going back <laughs> back into politics, but I, uh, I, have, I founded a, uh, uh, an organization. It's called the Anthony Jansson Association uh, in, in the Netherlands. And uh, what we do, what we try to do is to change by giving lectures uh, going into the country, schools, etc. Uh, so we, we we can show people what what that Islam is something else, and that you see, or what most people in Europe think. And it's a, I don't know if, if I have time, but uh, I don't know if you know who Anthony Jansson was. So I never heard of him. Okay, that's funny because it's an American. Yeah, he he became an American. Uh, Anthony Jansson van Salé. Um, he um, it's it's his father uh, was called Jan Jansson. It means son of Jan, <laughs> and Jan is a typical Dutch name, and it was around 1610, so a couple of hundred of years ago, he, uh, he was a, a, a pirate for the Dutch Navy, and he had to, um, yeah, we call it kapen, you have to uh, rob Spanish ships, because the Netherlands were a province of Spain then, and uh, in the end, we, we wanted to be independent. So what we did as, as a Dutch people, we attacked Spanish ships, took their silver and gold, and uh, used it uh, for weapons to fight against them. So we used their own money to fight against the Spanish. Now, one of those guys who did that was Jan Jansson. And one day he was uh, with his ship near Spain and the um, uh, uh, Canary Islands. It's near uh, Morocco. And his, he, uh, his ship broke down, and uh, he was uh, caught by pirates from the northern of Africa. And they brought him to uh, Saleh, and that's a little place in, uh, in Morocco. And then uh, they asked him, well, you can choose, or you buy yourself free, because you have a lot of money, or you walk back. <laughs> well, that's impossible, of course. Uh, or, you became, or you become a Muslim. And then... He asked, I don't know what, he asked him, what is a Muslim? I've never heard of a Muslim. What's a Muslim? And they explained him, and then he said, oh, then I'm already a Muslim. And they were so impressed that they said, well, if you are a Muslim, then you can choose, or you join us, or you, uh, yeah, you're, you're free to go wherever you are. And he said, well, I love the sea, I love robbing Spanish ships, so uh, I want to be part of your uh, gang, or uh, whatever, uh, whatever group it is. So he became a, a, a pirate for... Saleh and Saleh was a little a little republic and the Sultan of Saleh was so impressed with the things he did because he was a very good pirate <laughs> and uh, they robbed Dutch ships then <laughs> and Spanish ships uh, and uh, he they made him a president so he became the, <laughs> the first president of a Moroccan uh, place was Jan Jansson from <laughs> a little place out of Holland and he, uh, later on, he, he married uh, a Moroccan girl, uh, of course, a Muslim as well, and they got four children. And one of those children was called Anthony, and that's the, the guy why my foundation is Anthony, Jansson van Slees, Anthony in English. Uh, and he was sent to the New World with a lot of money from his father, because his father became very rich. And uh, that Jan Jansson's son, this Anthony, uh, Jan, yeah, Anthony Jansson van Salé, went to America because they called this the New World. And it wasn't America yet. It was still uh, yeah, part of uh, the British Empire. And he went to a place called New Amsterdam. And it was New York. And in New York, he, uh, some people say, well, it's founded by the Dutch New York. Eh? There's still uh, typical Dutch names, for example, the Bronx is uh, Brooklyn. Uh, is Breukelen, it's an old Dutch city. Uh, and it's true, it was founded by the Dutch, but the guy who did that was a Muslim, because Anthony Jansson van Salé was the guy who founded the Bronx. Uh, he developed uh, Brooklyn. They gave him, uh, he used, uh, they, he asked them, is there a, some land somewhere that I can buy? They said, no, you can't, because you're not a Christian. They, they didn't want it. And then he said, well, I pay, pay three times what you normally ask. He said, okay, <laughs> buy the land. 
and he gave that. And, and those, those uh, Bronx, for example, and Brooklyn were really were one of the first places in the New World, in New Amsterdam, were developed. Uh, and it, it was developed by a Dutch Muslim. <laughs> So even America, in the core, there are, uh, and I'm not talking about slaves, a, a rich man, a successful guy, was a Muslim who uh, was one of the founders of New York, still today. And what, uh, what another um, funny fact is maybe, is uh, the fact that the first Quran ever brought to the United States was brought by this guy, Anthony Jansson van Slee. So a Dutch Moroccan guy who was a Muslim brought the Quran to America. <laughs> It was very funny, and and I thought, well, he was a very positive guy, and uh, when he was in New York and he was uh, doing his thing, uh, he uh, was, of course, confronted with a lot of people who didn't like him because he looked different, but also because he was a Muslim. But he was very steadfast, and he did what he had to do. He helped, for example, uh, a little group, they called the Quakers, they were Christian people who were uh, persecuted by other Christians and he said no we, th we have religious freedom here and it's a new country nobody is the boss of someone else so uh, they can live on my land so he gave them room to practice their religion uh, he did some uh, he bought slaves etc he did a lot of good things and I thought well that's a nice name for the organization because of the history of his father the history of himself and the things he did so uh, and with that name I'll try and, and story a lot of people in the Netherlands don't know the story as well so I always tell it to show people that the beginning of the United States and that's uh, of course uh, one of the uh, mightiest uh, countries in the world was also Islamic in the core and it's always nice to, to show people that there's something familiar and it's not something so strange when it comes to Islam. Uh, in Dutch, it's afvallige, and it means apostate. And I choose uh, the the title because I'm an apostate of Christianity, of course, but it's also a wink it's because of the discussion about apostasy in Islam. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. I don't know, is this As working? Salam. Oh, it is, okay. First of all, thank you so very much. Um, I'm originally from what became New York, was New Amsterdam. Okay. <laughs> and uh, people, there are a lot of Dutch names that are well known <coughs> along the Hudson River, and I think the Hudson was, yep. the explorer was Dutch, and the Roosevelt's, President, the two President Roosevelt's Dutch ancestry. So there's a lot of history, but nobody mentions in America that they're Dutch. Anyway, welcome. Um, and many people don't know that the word California comes from the word Khalifa. Oh, I didn't so know. this is another <laughs> part of, of the Muslim history oh, uh, nice. on the West Coast. Um, I'm wondering when you speak to people, um, what reaction you get? Do you speak about Islam? Uh, do, you, do you find people are curious or more hostile? Are you able to change hostile people to be open-minded? What's, what's your experience? Um, yeah, of course, in, in the beginning, and there are still people who, who, who are very anti-me. <laughs> Uh, because we, because I became a Muslim, but in general, I have to say that most people are more interested than angry. So, so what happened to you? Why? So that's that's uh, that's I think it's a good thing because you have there is space and room to start talking to each other. And most of the time, I I, I ask them what what is your biggest problem with Islam, and most of the time, people don't know. Uh, so uh, we we try to to discover while talking what what he, his or her issue is with Islam and uh, yeah I I I got even got some emails from people that said well after you uh, uh, after I read your book I uh, of course I'm not a Muslim and uh, I still don't like Islam but I I get it so that's 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 uh, a little improvement <laughs> so I think there is a lot of room and uh, of course in the end. Uh, uh, it's 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 up to us as a community uh, to show people otherwise, and uh, I, I think in the end, as I'm still positive, I think that it it's possible uh, that that a lot of people will change, and I think it's something else in um, in, in Europe, and I don't know how it is in America. There's a little, uh, the secularization, so people stop believing in God. Um, in in Europe, uh, most of the people in other parts of the world think that in Europe everybody is Christian, but most of the people, especially in the Netherlands, aren't religious at all. 
and uh, the fact that they lost their religion not only in a in a cultural way but especially in a religious way yeah it, it creates uh, a hole in people's hearts because uh, there's a, a famous guy a, a religious scientist Eliades his name is that people are always religious and it's it's not that you have to be a Christian or Muslim or whatever but there is something that calls out for something bigger and he said because you are designed like that there's always you 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 yeah, you, you pray for God, uh, and in in what form uh, is, isn't isn't so important now. But he, he said, well, people, and if people lo lose God, they're going to search for something else. And I think in in Europe, uh, people uh, search their their they want to fill up the gap in their heart with, uh, for example, nationalism, uh, but also uh, with drugs or with um, uh, partying all the time. Uh, that they do things to 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 fill the the emptiness in their heart, and um, that that's something else. I, I see big chances for, for Islam because I think Islam is the last real religion, and a lot of people, when I, especially when I talk with Christian Protestant Christians who are very angry all the time when it comes to Islam, but when you talk to them f for real and in a calm way, they they realize very fast that for example the things I my, my problems the theological problems with Christianity for example the Trinity they they feel this they feel what I mean so that's what I always tell them. I say you know that it's 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 illogical and they say oh well maybe it's illogical but and uh, so I see big chances <laughs> for Islam as, as a religion to grow in a positive way uh, especially in, in places where people lost faith in God and, uh, may maybe that's that's a, that's a mission. <laughs> no, we we don't know, but it uh, would be nice. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, I, I, In my day job, I've had the pleasure of going to Holland uh, quite a few times in the last few years, uh, and like many <coughs> international travelers, uh, you know, I've used uh, Uber to get around the city in, in Amsterdam in particular. But I was really disturbed by something. And this is what I was kind of curious about your perspective as it relates to anti-discrimination laws in uh, the Netherlands as it relates to discrimination against people against Muslims as they're trying to integrate into the into the uh, workforce in particular I met a Dutch uh, a young man who was driving an uber he said he was a college grad born and raised a Pakistani descent uh, born and raised in the Netherlands and he said that every time he goes into a job interview he's asked about his prayer habits and other things that we would, in the U.S., we would find that th those are non-starters. Nobody gets asked about those kinds of questions here. And he said to me, do you think I'm driving an Uber because I choose to? I can't get a job. Anywhere I go, I'm facing these kinds of discrimination uh, issues. Uh, and, and, you know, so anyway, and then he said, ultimately, he goes, Identif I identify first as Muslim, then as Pakistani, and then third as Dutch, even though he was born in Holland. And I find that as, you know, in, in this country, we have at least at least uh, we start from the pr premise of that there are anti-discrimination laws that protect people when they are applying for jobs. Are there similar protections in the Netherlands or are they coming? Because I worry about that this large Muslim Moroccan population, for example, is being, or Pakistani is being, um, you know, kind of isolated in, in a ghetto where they are, or a mental ghetto where they really are not able to contribute more uh, faithfully to society as a whole and are identifying with their ethnic background as opposed to like you are, for example, of the people and, and contributing uh, broadly to uh, to the Netherlands? Yeah, a uh, very good question. Yeah, in, in the Netherlands there are a lot of anti-discrimination laws. Uh, we have, we, of course, we have a constitution as well, and the first article in the constitution is that um, all people should be um, uh, traded equal, no matter of uh, race, religion, etc., etc. So uh, there are a lot of uh, laws like that in the Netherlands. Uh, but there's also discrimination, and I think that discrimination is something that you see all over the world. Uh, all minorities, uh, minorities. Uh, I, I talked to some people from uh, 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 Lebanon yesterday. They uh, told me that uh, people from Syria who fled to Lebanon are discriminated because they are from Syria and they're refugees and they're um, and they're a burden for them. Uh, the same is it's what you see in Turkey and in the Netherlands you see that with Moroccan people or Turkish people and they, they are not refugees but uh, I think most of the time the majority in countries is skeptical about minorities in general 
Um, but yeah, fortunately, we have we have laws that um, that 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 uh, have to prevent people from discrimination. But that's yeah, that's not always uh, enough because when it comes to uh, especially uh, commercial companies, uh, they they can always say no, we uh, didn't have the papers that uh, we were uh, looking for, or uh, he has a weird smile or whatever. So it, that that is a, a big problem. It is, and I don't have an answer uh, f for that uh, for that problem. But uh, in the end, uh, you see that especially the third and the fourth generation in in the Netherlands are doing so much better. People starting their own companies. You have Islamic uh, lawyers, you have Islamic doctors, engineers. So in the end, and it takes a lot of time. And I then that, that's that's uh, that's not a f uh, nice thing, of course. But it takes a lot of time to. Yeah, yeah, walk through the institutions, as they uh, say in Dutch, uh, and and I, I believe it, it it will change. Only it takes so so much time, and that's that's something that a lot of people will are, aren't uh, willing to wait for, of course. Uh, and in the, uh, the the other uh, part, the other side of the story is that you see, in especially in Eastern Europe, yeah, that there's a very very strong anti-Islam movement now. And it's not only in Eastern Europe, but because uh, the anti-Islamic groups are uniting in the European Union now. So it's, it became one yeah, powerful force in, in politics now. So that's, that's something that's uh, very worrying. Uh, and, that, and it gives uh, a lot of uh, yeah, the, the, the normal people, as, as you can say, the, the people in general in different uh, European countries, uh, an excuse because they say, well, yeah, we have one third of parliament saying Muslims are wrong or uh, they uh, create problems. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, it isn't that bad if we discriminate because we know they cause problems. So it, it's it's uh, it's something that works on several uh, ways, and it's 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 very worrying. But I, th I think it, the, the the most important thing is educate people, telling people that it's 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 wrong. What you, uh, what what they are doing. And uh, I think it's it's also important to promote uh, Islam and, and and help each other. So if there is a guy with a successful company who is a Muslim, uh, he he all he can always uh, help other Muslims. For example, when it comes to yeah, we call it stashes. I don't know the internships, for example. Uh, and uh, so you can you can help each other as a community. It's it's a, it's an obligation. So why why won't you, won't you do that? So. Um, yeah, I, I don't have an, uh, a complete and, and uh, uh, satisfying answer, but <laughs> this is what it is. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum um, I have two questions, if I may. Um, during the discussion, you were uh, mentioning that you had Christian questions with, and you found actually Muslims answers. Um, could you actually share with us a few of those actually, where you think actually that these are the ones that made it for you? Um, and the second question is, um, with your involvement with the political field and then being in maybe actually prior anti-Islam. Oh, sure, sorry. Um, with the political um, movement and being anti-Islam prior to be, you being Muslim, you have mentioned that maybe most people will look at Islam based on maybe some of these terrorist around the world and maybe in Europe, are these actual terrorists or maybe these are actually like movements by certain governments in Europe that Islamophobic maybe that actually did make, lo make Islam look bad? What's your take on that actually as, as being involved in the anti-Islam movement back then? Okay, <laughs> that's a big question. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the first half of the question was about uh, Christian doubts. Uh, yeah, my, my doubts had to do with, with uh, especially with the Trinity, because in Christianity we believe that uh, God uh, exists as one being, but in three persons. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And I always found it very hard to uh, understand the concept, because uh, in, in, in Christianity... Uh, Jesus Christ dies on the cross, but he is God, so God dies. So I asked the minister, when I was 12 or 13, how is it possible that something that is infinite, infinity, 
the God is uh, is infinity or infinite. Um, how how is it possible that it dies? Because then it is ended. It's ending. So that that's impossible. And if he is dead and he is alive at the same time, that's something like a, a square circle. It's that's impossible. And then they said, well, it's a mystery. So yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, but you, you, you have to believe it, but if I try to believe it, I can't because it's a mystery. And I, I, I don't found that very satisfying. So that's something that, uh, and there are a lot of uh, uh, theologians who have very nice concepts. But in the end, it's, it's coming back to the question, is, is the God of Jesus Christ, is it one or three? And in the whole Bible, there is nowhere, there's no sentence in the Bible that says God is three. And it, it isn't there. Um, and and the, the parts that are referring to something that could be interpreted as three are added later. And it's even in the Christian Bible, you can see that it's, it's almost always between, I don't know how you say it, we call it hackies. Quotes. <laughs> no, not, not, not the, the quote. Yeah, yeah. yeah that one. Uh, and and uh, in Bible, it says uh, the, the, the sentences between those things uh, are added later. So there are, in, in the Bible there is no there is no um, there's no referation to God as three and uh, there is even a, a sentence uh, that Jesus Christ says here O Israel your God is one. Well, that is exactly the same as Prophet Muhammad said there is one God, and that's Allah. So it 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 wasn't logical for me. So I the 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 the, the Trinity thing was was a, an, an issue for me. And uh, another thing I talked about uh, earlier, short, it was about uh, whether uh, there should be a, a murder before God can forgive. And yeah, I, I found that uh, not logical because in, in the Bible says there's a story about uh, the uh, prodigal son. It's a story that uh, there's, a, there's a father and he has two sons and uh, it's a very rich father and it's a very successful company and uh, one of the sons goes away and he says well dad if you uh, you're so rich and uh, one day you will die so can't you give me the money I'll get when you die he says okay if <laughs> you want that here is the money and he goes away and he uh, does everything he shouldn't do he uh, is partying all the time and going to uh, hookers and I don't know what he does and he comes back he's totally uh, wasted and uh, he, uh, it's, it, he doesn't feel like a man anymore and he says well uh, what am I doing suddenly uh, I wish I, I, I'd never gone away and uh, he, he regrets it very much and after a few years he goes back to his father and, uh, and his father sees his son coming and uh, he, he says to his assistant well bring him the best clothes that you have uh, put a silver ring on his finger and let's celebrate that my son my lost son is back but the other son says, well, ho, ho, <laughs> I, I was working all the time for you. I did everything that I had to do. I abide you. I abide the law. We pray together to God. And a uh, you know, weird, weird willy there goes and does everything uh, wrong. And, and you're celebrating his return. And it's a story that Jesus tells in the Bible. And, uh, and, and then the, the, the apostles, the people around, uh, the Jesus followers ask, okay, what's, what's the point here? And, and Jesus says, well, okay, the, the father is happy that his son returned. After he did so much things wrong, he still accepts him. And there is no condition, there's not, no son or whatever who had to die first, or there's no, there's no slapping or no screaming, there's nothing. He just forgives his son. And it was for me, I thought, yeah, well, the prodigal son story that Jesus tells, it's almost 180 degrees opposite of one of the dogmas of Christianity because if Jesus tells uh, this story to show the Rachma of God, how is it that, that the Christian church teaches that God wants to see someone get killed first? So there was another point for me that I thought, well, I, the, the Islamic narrative is much more logical and it it's uh, in, in a sense even more Christian than the Christian teachings. Uh, the other part of your question, I forgot, sorry. Some of these suicide bombers, were they actually like suicide bombers or these are just a, a Islamophobic uh, movement actually trying to 
advertised actually for these people being around, you know, it's part of actually propaganda. Okay, no, well, well you, in, in the Netherlands, well, I think terrorism is a real problem because uh, you see, uh, for example, Theo van Gogh, Theo van Gogh, he was murdered, and he was murdered in the town where I live by uh, a guy who was very known in the area, uh, Mohammed Bey, Mohammed Bouchery. Uh, yeah, and he, he killed him. Uh, yeah, we literally seen the guy uh, doing it. He was shooting with a gun. After that, he slit his throat. He uh, pulled a sword in his stomach. He was, he was butchered. Uh, and, and the same you have in France, for example, in Paris, in Belgium, and uh, in other parts of Europe. Uh, well, of course, in the United States as well. So I think terrorism is a real problem. And I think there are Muslims or people who call themselves Muslims who do very bad things. But that's not a reflection of the religion. And that's what, what I uh, told earlier. It's the same that, that there were in, in the United States where white uh, guys, uh, Christian guys, who burned black people and uh, burned crosses in their backyard and, uh, and lynched people, hanged them on trees, etc. But then they said, well, we are real Protestant Christians. They even uh, hated Catholics. But that's not a reflection of the teachings of the Christian church. So uh, it's, it's, of course, unfair to judge uh, a, a whole religion and uh, more than uh, one billion people on the, 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 the sick things a small marginal part of the group is doing. And I think that, that it counts for all religions. I think most of the religions reflect something good. And, uh, yeah, of course, I think that the, the whole truth with capital T is, is, uh, is in Islam. Um, but but still, I don't know that if if other I still don't think that other religions are totally wrong or uh, people should be killed or etc uh, etc. Et uh, and, and when it comes to terrorism, I think it's a real problem. I think that people should be punished who, who act like terrorists. Uh, and at the same time, I think it's not a reflection of Islam. Uh, it's there there are psycho people in the world, and there are Christian psychos, there are Buddhist psychos in Myanmar. There are people in China who are uh, uh, treating Uyghur uh, Muslims as, as beasts. They, those people are psycho. So there are a lot of psycho people in the world, but it's not a reflection of the religion, not of Islam and not of Christianity. And I don't think it's a reflection of Buddhism as well, how they treat in Myanmar Muslims. Okay, let's give a round of applause to our special guest. <laughs>